afternoon. I welcome our viewers from across the globe today and thank you for being part of this show. Today we'll be talking about ECOWAS, that's the Economic Community of the West African States. We want to examine why it was formed and we'll be discussing this subject matter within the context of what is happening right now in Niger and also the a larger sub-region of the Sahel of Africa. So ECOWAS, like you all know, had threatened military intervention in Niger in order to restore constitutional rule. This followed the, the coup uh, that ousted President Bazoum from power. Now the word economic makes it clear that the objectives of this community, this regional body, is economic. It simply means economic community of West African states. Now, in Europe, we used to have what we call the European Economic Community, but this has now become the European Union. So the economic community of West African states is modeled after the former European Economic Community. So, like we noted, ECOWAS has threatened uh, uh, military intervention if President Bazoum is not reinstated. And we note that this is unprecedented. We note that uh, ECOWAS had, in, in, in some decades ago, the, this body had intervened in Liberia and also in uh, Sierra Leone in order to restore law and order. There was civil strife, there was insurrection in these two countries that threatened to destabilize the entire uh, West African sub-region. But ECOWAS had never intervened for the purpose of reinstating a deposed president. So today we look at ECOWAS Charter with a view to determining whether this regional body has any political mandate, and if it is empowered to intervene in the internal affairs of a member state in situations like this. ECOWAS came into being on the 28th of May, 1975. The French acronym for ECOWAS is CDRO. It means Communauté Économique des États de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. I repeat, Communauté Économique des États de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. That is what it means. Now, if you look at the map on the screen right now, you will discover that this regional body consists of 15 member states. And these are Republic of Benin, Republic of Burkina Faso, Cap Verde, Cap Verde, Côte d'Ivoire, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and then Togo. The mission, the main objective, is to promote economic integration in all fields of economic activity, particularly in industry, in transport, telecommunications, in energy, in agriculture, in natural resources, in commerce, in monetary and financial questions, and also social and cultural matters. So if you look at that, the key phrase is economic integration. This is suggestive of the reason why the body was created in the first instance. Now let's look at the charter. And uh, mind you, I will provide a link of this charter in the description box below. We we'll look at the preamble of this charter. The preamble reads, it said the president of the republic, head of state, head of revolutionary military government, president of the National Council of the Revolution of Dahomey. Now, Dahomey is now called the Republic of Benin. 
It goes on, the President of the Republic of Gambia, the Head of State and Chairman of the National Redemption Council of the Republic of Ghana, the Head of State and Commander-in-Chief of the People's Revolutionary Armed Forces, President of the Republic of Guinea, the President of the Republic of Guinea-Bissau, the President of the Republic of Ivory Coast, that is Cote d'Ivoire, the President of the Republic of Liberia, the Chairman of the Military Committee of National Liberation, President of the Republic of Mali, the President of Islamic Republic of Mauritania. Now, I note that Mauritania has since withdrawn, so Mauritania is no longer a member. I go on. The Head of State and President of the Supreme Military Council of the Republic of Niger, the Head of the Federal Military Government, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Also, the President of the Republic of Senegal, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, the President of the Togolese Republic, the President of the Republic of Upper Volta. Upper Volta is now called the Republic of Burkina Faso. Now, some of my viewers may be wondering, why have I taken the pains to go through all this? The reason why I have done this is because I want to draw your attention to the fact that about 50% of the signatories of this charter are military heads of state. Yes. In 1975, Ghana was under military rule. Nigeria was under military rule. Republic of Bene, which then used to be called Dahomey, was under military rule. Guinea was under military rule. Niger was under military rule. Mali was under military rule. About half of the signatories of uh, uh, this ECOWAS charter were military heads of state. It is therefore an irony that a body that was set up mostly by military figures in 1975 has now become so sanctimonious in preaching democracy to the rest of us and even threatening to intervene to uh, reinstate a deposed president. Now we we'll go back to the charter and I read, it says, conscious of the overriding need to accelerate, foster and encourage the economic and social development of their states in order to improve the living standards of their peoples, convinced that the promotion of harmonious economic development of their states calls for effective economic cooperation, largely through a determined and concerted policy of self-reliance, recognizing that progress towards sub-regional economic integration requires an assessment of the economic potential and interests of each state, accepting the need for a fair and equitable distribution of benefits of cooperation, noting that forms of bilateral and multilateral economic cooperation exi existing in the sub-region. Now, let me stop there a little bit. Have you also observed that even in the preamble to this charter, they were talking about the need to foster and encourage economic development. They were convinced of the need to promote uh, harmonious economic development and they, 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 call, they called for effective economic cooperation through a determined and concerted policy approach. Have you also noted that they talked about sub-regional economic integration, and that re requires an assessment of economic potential of each member state. Have we also observed that there was a need for a fair and equitable distribution of benefits amongst members? Have you observed that the preamble noted that uh, there were forms of bilateral and economic uh, cooperation arrangements uh, that were, were existing within the sub-region that have to be taken note of? So why are we taking the pain?
to go through all this. I just want to point out that economic factors actually override the political considerations for this chapter. Now, let me read on, and please don't go away. It is what, what we're dealing with today is an eye-opener, especially in relation to what is going on now in Niger and the, the wider West African sub-region. I look at the aims of the community. One, it says, it shall be the aim of the community to promote cooperation and development in all fields of economic activity, particularly in the fields of industry, transport, telecommunication, energy, agriculture, natural resources, commerce, monetary and financial questions in social and cultural matters for the purpose of raising the living standards of the people of West Africa uh, and for the purpose of increasing and maintaining economic stability and for the purpose of fostering closer relations among its members and for the purpose of contributing to the progress and development of the African continent. So you also see, like we mentioned earlier, that the main aim is economic. It's economic. So in order to realize the aims of this economic community, they set out in paragraph two the steps that will be taken in order to achieve the economic uh, objectives and to achieve the full economic potential of West Africa. And they said in, para, in, two, in paragraph two, it said for the purpose set out in the preceding paragraph and as hearing after provided for in this treaty, the community shall by stages ensure A, the elimination as between the member states of customs duties and other charges of equivalent effect in respect of importation and exportation of goods. So elimination of customs duties relating to importation and exportation of goods. That's an economic measure. B, the abolition of quantitative and administrative restrictions on trade among the member states. In other words, all the restrictions, whatever would restrict trading relationships amongst the uh, parties, the contracting parties, the charter undertook to eliminate them, abolish them completely. C, the establishment of a common customs tariff and a common commercial policy towards third countries. That is an economic measure. It is not political at all. D, the abolition as between the member states of the obstacles to free movement of persons, services, and capital. I will later talk about this issue of free movement of goods and persons and services. And then E talks about the harmonization of the agricultural policies and the promotion of common projects in member states, notably in the fields of marketing, research, and the agro-industrial enterprises. F, the implementation of schemes for the joint development of transport, communication, energy, and other infrastructural facilities, as well as the evolution of a common policy in these fields. G, the harmonization of economic and industrial policies of member states and the elimination of disparities in the level of development of member states. H, the harmonization required for the proper functioning of the community of monetary policies of member states. I, the establishment of a fund for cooperation, compensation and development, and J, such other activities calculated to further the aims of the community as the member states may from time to time undertake in common. So you look at even the measures that the founding fathers of ECOWAS, the measures that they, put in, they said they're going to put in place, these measures were to further the economic objectives of this uh, uh, regional body. The measures are largely economic, and the steps to be taken to realize the economic potential of the entire West Africa 
these steps are largely economic. So why have we taken all the time to go into all this? The reason is because we, we can see from the main objective of this charter that ECOWAS was set up principally to ensure economic integration of the entire West African sub-region. The body was not set up to interfere in the internal affairs of member states or to determine for them what kind of government that they should have. We have noted earlier that even the figures, the signatories to this charter, about half of them were military presidents and military heads of states. The body was not set up also to be used by foreign powers to determine who should be or who should not be the president of another country, a member state. But the reality today is that the economic objectives of in integration of West African uh, economies have not been achieved. These objectives have not been achieved. So you now begin to wonder what is going on. ECOWAS is traveling along a direction which is contrary to the objectives of the, the, the charter. So, the present political leadership in West Africa is advised to revisit the provisions of the charter because when they do, they will discover that ECOWAS was not set up for political intervention in the internal affairs of uh, other states. Now, I talked about free movement of uh, goods and persons and services earlier. Now, in furtherance of these economic objectives, the West African region now enjoys freedom of movement of persons. As I make this video right now, I can travel to any part of West Africa, any part of the economic community of West African states. Actually, my passport, my Nigerian passport, has ECOWAS uh, inscribed in it. It means I can travel to any part of West Africa or any state that is a member without being subject to immigration controls. Now, I read Article uh, 27 of this charter to prove the point that we're making today. Article 27 talks about freedom of movement and residence. Article 27.1 says, Citizens of member states shall be regarded as community citizens and accordingly, member states undertake to abolish all obstacles to their freedom of movement and residence within the community. Article 27.2, it says, Member states shall, by agreement with each other, exempt community citizens from holding visitors, visas, and residence permits, and allow them to work and undertake commercial and industrial activities within their territories. So for the purpose of realizing the economic objectives of a charter, trade has been liberalized. Payment of custom duties has been abolished. There are now provisions for favored treatment in trading relations amongst member states. Now, a country like France has never been happy about ECOWAS. France views ECOWAS with suspicion. What's the reason for that? Because France does not want a situation where her former colonies are able to determine economic, monetary, and financial policies without the input, without the control of France. France always wants to be in control. We have shown this in our previous videos. We have been able to establish that the neo-colonial agreements between France and her former colonies in Africa, these were agreements that were actually put in place to ensure that France was always in control. Now, unfortunately, today, ECOWAS is as it's presently constituted and in the direction that it is traveling is playing into the hands of France. And if ECOWAS fails, as it's threatening to do, France will be happier for it. Now, as we close our show today, 
We have demonstrated in this video that the threat of military intervention in Niger is outside the mandate, outside the purview of the objectives of ECOWAS. So those who are planning military intervention are acting without due consideration of the main objectives of the founding fathers of this regional body. My suggestion here is that these belligerent parties should go back to the drawing board. I want to thank my viewers for watching today. And if you have enjoyed our video, if you found it useful, consider to be a member of this channel and support the work that we do. Consider also to, 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 to like, consider to share the work that we do. Consider also to send in comments as a, a way of showing that you are engaging with us. You can send in something that is contrary to what we have said. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that we have ideas being generated and ideas flowing. Once again, thank you. Bye.